Hey everyone, so I recently made a game where I heavily uh, leaned on using AI to generate many of these components for the game. Uh, sort of wanted to show it all off. Uh, I spent about 60 hours over 8 days making this game, so you know it's a little bit of, of effort, but the fact that I was able to get a game of this quality, I was very 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 happy. Uh, I'm pretty proud of the results. Um, I thought it came out pretty well, both the visuals and the feel of the game. So if you want to try out the game, I got the link in the description. You can play it for free. But in this video, I'm going to be going over the, the broad basics of how I did this uh, and building upon things I did in the previous episode. So the biggest thing was the visuals that built off of the last episode. So if you saw my latest video, this is not going to be a surprise to you. Uh, I'll have that link down in the description, but it was a way to to generate these pixel art animations and sort of we come back. Uh, you can see this is a character that we made out of it. Now I'd mentioned in the previous video that, that weapons are a little more difficult. I have a little more practice with this now, so it's not that bad for me. But basically these are, are two different objects coming in uh, and I would just hand animate the sword position to the keyframes that I cared about. Uh, the fact that like it jumps around and doesn't follow perfectly doesn't matter because I'm only taking a few frames out of the entire animation and rendering those out. That's one of the benefits of the, the pixel art is that you can have these lower frame rate animations and it's a lot less work. So I was able to get that in. The same thing for the other characters. So for instance, the, the ranger here, I hand animated the bow. Uh, I did various like stretching things. It didn't take me that long. Basically the entire first weekend I had all the visuals for all the, the basic characters and the player, uh, both the visuals and the code implementation done for them. So it actually did not take me that much time to do all of the different enemies and there's four different enemy types, uh, basic enemy types in the game. Uh, moving on, not just the visuals, I also worked on the sound in the game uh, using AI. So I used Optimizer AI. I was fairly happy with the results. Uh, I took a few tries for some of them to get exactly the sound I liked, but generally I got, you know, sounds that I liked, um, you know, even if it did take me 5, 10, 15 different generations. Some of them did require a little bit of cleanup, uh, but it wasn't that bad, it's just in, in uh, Audacity. Then for the music that you're listening to right now, I ended up using Udio. Uh, I was also very happy with the result here. I've used them in the past. Uh, I ended up getting a subscription so I can have more generations and in painting to play around with that. I ended up having issues with the uh, sort of pacing of it. It would always try to go to these like slower pieces uh, with like softer tones. And I kept having to push it in the right direction. I think I spent about three hours generating this six minute song in the game. And then I also had to do a little bit of cleanup. So if we take here a look at the waveform, the top is the original, the bottom is the cleaned up one. You see that it starts off very soft, but then it gets these very, very loud sections. So I would, I would tune the sound for it to sound good in the game with the volumes at the beginning, but then the later sections would be way overpowering. So I had to come in here and I had to I manually you know, tune the volume levels for different parts of the song. And then it also really enjoyed having these you know, gaps in certain parts of the song. So you can see that the ending is, uh, the, the final version is a little shorter than the original because I, I took a lot of these, these pauses out so that we didn't have any downtime. But, you know, for the most part, I was, I was fairly happy with that. Now, when it came to the actual game design and coding, a lot of that was done by me. Uh, I am a fairly proficient coder, so the current AI tools are still not up to a level that I would find beneficial to actually you know increasing my productivity but I did use chat GPT in a section uh, and that was specifically to deal with the archer now if we take a look at the visuals here the archer has a specified uh, sort of firing angle that it fires off so if we fire an, uh, an arrow higher or shallower it looks kind of weird because it's not coming out of the direction that the, the archer is holding the bow but I do have a known distance when the archer is firing between the archer and the player. And I do have a known constant of gravity. And along with that uh, angle, I can 
actually compute the power that I should fire the arrow with for it to follow, you know, a normal parabolic trajectory to hit the player where they are at the time that the, the archer releases the arrow. Now, I took physics a few years back. I could probably figure it out, but I just went over to ChatGPT and I asked it what it thought, and it spit out, you know, this answer with not only the answer, but the work that it followed, and I plugged in the formula, and it actually worked. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy, you know, with, with how good this tooling is for being able to get these kinds of answers where I, I'm able to, to plug it into the game, and, you know, here it is in the code, and it just immediately works, and I don't have to think about it that much. Uh, and it's it's sort of able to to take some of these these components off, and you know it, it's only going to get better and better. So at this point, looking forward, I am starting work on another you know side action game uh, that I'm playing around with. It's going to take a little longer because it's going to be a bigger game, and right now I'm in sort of the the design phase where I'm building out various components. Uh, I'm not leaning on you know AI right now too heavily on that simply because a lot of it is these kind of polished things where it's creating the artwork or the sound or the music, which is going to come later in the process. But I am still going to be tinkering with these kinds of things. Uh, I'm going to be trying to, to sort of improve these workflows in the background so that when I do get to the point in that game, uh, I can do that. Um, I did want to play around some more of the, the audio stuff. I've heard that Suno is really good uh, for generating music as well. So if y'all have any opinions or thoughts or things that you would like to see more tutorials on, uh, please do let me know in the comments uh, and I'll see you in the next one.